What's up everybody? So we're back out in the shop and we're doing another vlog build. So just like the other vlog builds, we're going to break this one down into segments so that I can actually really get into why I'm making this decisions that I'm making whenever I'm doing these builds and uh, be able to give y'all more insight and maybe y'all can learn a little bit more from it and y'all can see the things that I learn in the process of making these knives because most of the knives that I make, it's the, my first time making them, especially for these videos. Um, I really don't show y'all much process of me remaking knives that I've already made. So most of the knives that y'all see are ones that this is the first time I'm making them. So I'm learning and y'all are learning with me while I'm doing it. And I'm telling y'all what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. But for this particular build, we are going to do a EDC slash camp knife slash survival knife kind of tailored to whatever you want to do with it. The reason why I'm not just considering this an EDC knife is because I'm not doing a shorter EDC handle. This is a full size handle. It's going to have a lanyard hole. It's going to be something you could really get a good grip on and swing if you need to do pretty much anything you can imagine doing with it. I'm going to do a full flat grind, but in this little area right here, I'm going to leave a 90 degree spine. So if you wanted to use the knife to strike a ferro rod to throw sparks, you can. Um, we're doing a pinch hole for fine work, plus we're doing a little bit of an up sweep on it. So if you needed to skin, and that pinch hole actually works with that when you're skinning. Uh, this is just going to be a good all around knife. We're doing it out of 1095, so it's going to have great edge retention, be super durable. And uh, we're going to do an acid etch stone wash with G10 handle scales. I'm just excited about how this is going to turn out. We're going to make a cool sheath for it in the end, but let's jump into it. Let's break it down, make a knife. Let's do it. All right. What I wanted to do was just kind of break down some of the decisions that I made on this knife and start with that. So when I originally envisioned this knife, I thought of something that could be used for pretty much anything outdoors or just EDC. For one, I wanted to give it a full size handle because a lot of my EDC knives have a smaller handle. You see there, it's about an inch shorter on this EDC knife versus this knife. Now the blade itself is four inches long, so it's not a super long blade. Most survival knives would have between a four inch and a six inch blade. This one, full size handle, but the shorter end blade. And what I wanted to do was give it just a little bit of an up sweep. So if you needed to skin with it, you can. I wanted to give it that drop point so that if you wanted to turn this into a spear, you could. If you look at it right there, it is an actual spear point. Now, I did do the pinch hole right there for being able to do that fine work if you needed to do it. Plus, we're doing a full flat grind. I wanted to make it an actual wedge. So if you did need to baton it, you can. This is 3 16 stock, so this is going to be a thicker knife. Now, we are going to do that 90 degree spine right here. So if you needed to use it to throw sparks with the ferro rod, you can. Like I said, I wanted to make it to where it was just a good all-around knife. And we're not using wood on the handle scales. We're going to be using G10. And I, I'm doing that because I want it to be something that can be absolutely durable and not have to worry about if it gets wet or something. And then the reason behind the acid etch and the stone wash is just to add that extra layer of protection and forcing the patina so you're not going to have to worry about rust as much. So that's the whole point behind the way I designed this knife. I wanted that all around, take it with you for pretty much any scenario knife. I think this is going to do that, but let's go ahead and jump into the actual build itself. We're going to go ahead and drill the holes and then we're going to cut it out. So let's hop into it. We're 
going to go ahead and just drill all the holes before we cut it out. Uh, this, you don't have to do this step. You can do it afterwards if you want, but I'm doing it like this on this one. But this is a 3 16 bit that I'm working with at the beginning. And then we're going to step up for the lanyard hole to a quarter inch bit. And I am going to drill through that pinch hole with a quarter inch bit as well. And then step up to that 3 8 one right there. Now what I'm doing here is I'm just drilling extra holes in the tang to make the handle lighter. It also creates little channels for the epoxy to go through and creates a better mechanical bond. You don't have to do this step. This is just to make the knife balanced and you know it's a personal preference. If you like your knives a little bit heavier, don't drill the holes. <laughs> but I'm doing a 3 16 bit for all these primary small holes and then I'm going to step up to a 3 8 bit on the center hole for the holes that I'm drilling through to make a lighter. You don't want to drill the holes to where they're too close to the outer wall of the tang because you'll create weak spots. Uh, right now we're chamfering the holes, just make them to where they're nice and smooth. Now this piece of billet that I have here, the edge was actually hardened from whenever they laser cut it. So if you ever get steel that is laser cut and it's hardened on the edge, all you have to do is just rock it back and forth and it will start cutting through with your port band saw. So don't get discouraged if you can't cut through your steel with that. If you want to, you can always use an angle grinder as well. But like always, I'm cutting as much of this off as I can. That way I don't have to spend much time on the belt grinder grinding it back. There are times when I'm, I do that, when I do leave a little excess on there and grind all the way back if I'm trying to be consistent and make multiple knives, I'll do it that way. I'll leave excess and I'll grind back to the line. But on this one, it's a one-off and the template's going to be made off of this knife. We go in and we start refining the shape on the belt grinder. We shouldn't have to do a ton of work because we've done a lot of the work on the porter band saw, but you want to go in and just start refining that shape. And what I'm doing here, because this is still my first time making this knife, I'm even going in and filling the handle and seeing if I need to refine it even more or change a few things or slightly curve things a little bit different. And I do that a lot with my knives to make sure that they feel comfortable in the hand because sometimes whenever you draw something out, it doesn't actually feel good in the hand. And you really have to see how these knives feel weighted, how they, the curves feel in your hand, all those things, because that is gonna transfer into a good quality knife. I had to move that finger choil a little bit. That's what I was doing right there. I gripped it, needed to adjust it. And we're just gonna use the top wheel on my 2x72. And what this does is it gets rid of the grind lines that are going perpendicular to the blade. You want all of these grind lines to go parallel with the actual blade itself. It just leaves for a better finish and it creates less sanding work in the future. You can see how they all go one direction now. We'll get into this finger choil with the Oscillating spindle sander, also known as a drum sander. This is the equivalent to a small wheel attachment for a 2x72. You can see right here, this is how rough it is prior to me using this on it. 
and you'll be able to see how smooth that something as simple as this will make this knife. Doesn't take a long time, doesn't take a lot of work. You just go ahead, get after it, and let this machine do its job. And you get that result right there. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up today's daily vlog. Now, I want to take a second and recap what we've done to this point. So, with this knife, we had the design that I thought through what I was going to be doing with this knife and what it needed to be able to do, how it needed to fill in my hand, and what I was going to be doing with it. So, we came up with that first, and we had that. And we put it on the 1095 that we're using. Then we went and drilled the holes while it was still in bar stock form. So we have all the holes here. That's a pinhole. That's a pinhole. That's a pinhole. That's a lanyard tube hole. The rest of these are just to lighten the knife. And I'm going to hit on that in just a second. But we got the holes drilled in it. Got that pinch hole. Then we went ahead, cut it out. And then we smoothed it out and rounded everything with the belt grinder. And then we went to the oscillating spindle sander and got a little bit of extra fine tuning in here. And then I did end up fine tuning it more on the spindle sander, but my battery died, so I don't have the footage of that. Uh, now, what I wanted to talk about for a second is why you put these holes in here again. So, a lot of people will try and figure out in this particular form right here where the weight is going to be and try and make it even. Well, this knife right now is weighted towards the blade. You do that on purpose so that whenever you remove stock from here and you add material here, it ends up balancing where it needs to balance you can have it a little bit more forward heavy. You don't want it to be too handle heavy. You can have it a little bit blade heavy because that's going to pull you through things. But you really don't want it to be handle heavy. That's not the goal whenever you're making knives. Well, it's not the goal whenever I'm making knives. That is all personal preference on how you like your knives made. That's my personal preference, so that's why I do that. So I always want people to, to think through what you're going to do in the next few steps as opposed to always thinking in the moment and what you're doing right now. You need to have forethought and you need to think through what's going to come up next and the next step after that and the step after that and that's going to help you become a better knife maker. So there you go. That's where we're at. But guys, thank you all for coming by and checking this out and if you would, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video or a video that I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And guys, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button right there and turn on the notification bell so you get notified for when we complete this and, of course, all of the other future builds. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending time with me and checking this out. Y'all have an amazing day. I'll catch y'all next time. <laughs>